today's the day of the well anticipated Fort Worth Regional. I think today we're going to cap out at about 500 players here. I'll see you during round one. be the rounds one through three recap uh round one i beat him in 15 minutes it's a kind of easy gg when you're playing against uh valent valent souls or whatever that deck is called all you have to do is end on a legal night and keep bouncing on his turn i bounce too on my turn i bounce too and back on his turn again i bounce too because i couldn't find a tuner and that really sealed it up game two i just did the i just did the normal board after he had no hand traps and he ended on one monster because i affect valor the the rising and I was kind of GG's. But game two, bro, I get eradicated for five in game two. Game two, I win. Game two, he eradicates me for five. Game three, we're in town. We're in time because game one took because game one took 35 minutes. So now we're in time. And he and he burgers me for 15. Game three recap. Well, match three recap. Uh I lose to to Cash Tira. Game one, I win. I do the normal combo. I win. Game two, I I draw. I draw two Enchantress, three right off the top. My draw for turn is Ash. Can't really do anything. Scoop it up. Go game three. Game three, we're we're grinding for a while. Time's about to get called with about three minutes on the clock. He summons uh the Red MD uh rank seven and then i start burning for five i try to flex into the satellite warrior play but i still can't put enough damage on the board because uh because the big the big boss monster shangri lies in defense so right now i'm sitting x2 i gotta win out from here on out to top the best part of any regional the shiny cardboard Back with the recount after round five, uh, game four, uh, round four, I mean, round four, uh, beat the man in five minutes. Uh, game one, I did the synchro board, I ripped two, and then dissipated Barone plus Arc Light, shut the man down for every card in his hand. I got a negate, called it GG's. Game two, man's bricks. I start out with right, he scoops. Uh, game five recap uh i play cash you know cash deer it was a grindy game but i grinded them out uh with the right a legal knight is the best card in the deck hands down you should always play a legal knight because if whenever it bounces they don't get that shit back you bounce and thus ends the regional experience i was back to back losses first loss went to rescue ace i might have to look into that deck because he was cooking me bro he didn't start the fire, but he dang sure put it out. He goes first. Turbulence set four. I can't play through seven interactions with the Adventure Synchron deck. Game two, I go first, and he draws Droll. Yup. That says everything right there, Droll. I hate Droll. Konami, limited to one. Uh, game seven, well, match seven, I mean. Match seven, I'm playing against uh it was Sword Soul. Now game one, game one, I lost to misplay. I for I forgot that Trail had an effect to put a token on the field. The token would have been there to help me. Would have helped me get in flex into uh Crystal Wing. Negate. Uh but I'm well let's not talk about what could have been. Let's talk about the goo that he used in game then in game two, where he eradicated me. By tributing the Berserker of the Tingy, who plays Eradicator and Sword Soul. Eats my hand up for four. Now it's time to go. The Dre after the event, uh, I know I lost a lot, but here's my deck profile. All right, first we're going to start out with two Jet Synchron, two Assault Synchron two Stardust Synchron, 
the one Stardust Trail. That is all that we have for like the Synchro Monster package, plus the trail for the Stardust Synchro package. Now let's get on to the adventure. We got three Water Enchantress and one Illegal Knight. As I said, I play Illegal Knight over Griffin Rider because Illegal Knight, it bounces in the most boards, but beats out most boards because you can bounce the, the most problem cards on most boards. This can bounce like a good Shangri Ela. Uh, it can bounce Baguska, which hurts the deck. Uh, in the Vanquish Souls matchup, it really beats anything because it beats Caesar Valius. It beats uh, Ryzen to pop the monsters in the in the column. It really beats out most matchups. So I just picked the Legal Knight because one negate doesn't really do that much in this format. Then for like the non the non tuner just easy summon monsters, we got three Reborn Tingu. Tingu really just keeps coming back, so it's hard to really out. And then it's great Synchro fodder to just keep climbing. And then we got two Fenrir. Fenrir is a fantastic card for whenever for whenever you get drove, you can just summon Fenrir plus the adventure token and illegal knight, and that's a and that's like four interruptions just let alone. Plus it's a free seven if you need the synchro summon real quick. Now for the hand traps, which really work as a small world bridge. We have three ash, three nib, three drove, and three effect bailers. I really just tried to pick out the hand traps that really do the most in the format. Nib can really break most boards. Droll stops a whole lot of decks. Ash is just good generic and the fake veiler the same way. Now, here's the rest of the right package with three right of Averis here. One Fateful, one Dragobat, and one Foolish Burial to send the Water Enchantress. If you open Foolish Burial and you already have the Water Enchantress, I usually send Stardust, uh, Stardust Synchron. Just in case they, just in case they like have a droll or something, it really just helps because uh you send Stardust and then even if, even for the next turn you have follow up. The Stardust Synchro on, on its own is still a level eight Synchro. Now for like Searchers, we have three Small World. Small World can really search you any monster you need in the deck, and then if you have everything that you need at the end of your combo, it can search you like a hand trap to play on the next turn. I usually used it to search like droll. If I needed like extra boost, then we got retuning, which really just searches you anything that you need. Uh, two synchro overtake. Now I know people say don't play synchro overtake, but I like it because it, it makes it to where you don't really have to normal summon. And I like I like being able to flex a normal summon just in case I get nibbed or something. At the end of the combo, I can like resurrect a junk uh, a jet synchron and have like a normal summon that at least end on something besides just a plain out Nibiru token. And then we've got one Stardust Illumination. It really just is a search off of Stardust Synchron to get trail in the field. And that's it for the main deck. Now on to the extra deck. Let's start off with one Satellite Warrior. It's really the boss monster that we use the OTK on turn three. Uh, Baron de Four. Uh, most times I don't want to end on this anymore because usually it would just open my board up to Super Poly because it and Dispater uh, makes into into Draco a quest. I got Draco a quest three times, but I mean they if they open it they open it. Now we got Excel Stardust Dragon, the regular Stardust Dragon. Excel Stardust Dragon doubles as a way to go into the medium junk speeder. Then we've got Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Uh, this is really just a flex to uh, to use it off junk speeder plus something. Really just summons this. And they never expect a negate. Hot Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. I summoned this a whole lot. It came up way more than I thought it would come up. It really is just a uh, if I need another way to pop their board because you can summon this even if they banish it off a of Mirror Jade or like a Rise Heart. You can just you can just banish Assault Synchron from your grave to bring it back, and it's not a hard once per turn to pop everything. Then we've got one Omega Hand Rip Two is crazy. This plus this powder is hand rip two plus two negates. So they really only have one card in their hand that they can really activate, activate. Clear Ring Synchro Dragon. Uh, I like this because in the cat in the cash matchup, this negates one level five or higher monsters effect. So if they activate, if they activate like Fenrir or Unicorn, you can just negate it, gain the attack, and then attack over a Rise Heart. And they have to either banish it or do something to it right there. So it's really a two for one if they don't really do it. Then we've got Charge Warrior. Charge Warrior is just a level six that we play to draw one 
are it just la usually I just use the ladder up to to satellite warrior or stuff like that. Now we got the best card in the deck, Junk Speeder. Special three is amazing. And we got TG Hyper Librarian to draw. In the usual combo, we use it to draw like four cards, which makes me have way more hand advantage than my opponent. So even if they break the board, I still have way more to go off. And then a Cell Synchron. Uh, the funniest thing I used a Cell Synchron for this weekend was I used a Cell Synchron plus TG Hyper Librarian. I keep a Cell Synchron its regular level. And this was this equals 10, so I could pop a lot of cards on my opponent's turn with Satellite Warrior. It, they never respected it. Then we've got Jet Warrior. This is just the reveal off of, uh, off of uh, Synchro Overtake to summon Jet Speeder. And then the best card was really Herald of the Arc Light. With Herald, you can you can uh, Illumination Banish to make Stardust Synchron a level 3. And then you can add that to, uh, to the token summoned off Trail. And that's a 4. And Arc Light really just beats out every every off meta deck because banishing all their cards really stops it. And then this opens us up to not get negated by Forbidden Droplet. So it really was a great card. Now on to the side deck. The side deck was really a little a little battered and beat. I should not played this, but we played three Bestial Magnemute and one Druid Worm. These never came up. I, I should have really played like Call By or something else in place of it. But I really thought that Math Mech would come up or some deck that was really beat out by it. But I really should just research a little bit more. Uh, for side deck, for si uh, for trap heavy decks, we played two Lightning Storm and three evenly. Uh, these came up whenever I played. Uh, whenever I played against a back row heavy deck, I didn't really see any. But I sided these in against uh against Sword Soul, and it really helped. And now we've got uh three Dark Ruler. And three cross out. Cross out was a great card going first. Uh, I never really drew it, but if I would have seen it, it would have been amazing. And that's about it for the deck profile.